Hi everybody, Mike with Enviroscape LA, here today on a project in Manhattan Beach, California, and we, our landscape company just installed this beautiful, gorgeous lawn. Check this thing out, it's absolutely gorgeous. We just watered it in. Well, grass has been villainized the last several years to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars and been given out to residents because they were told uh, something that isn't necessarily the complete truth. Um, we're taking the charge in telling people this year that you do not have to villainize grass. Grass is not evil, it's not wicked, it's not a villain. Grass is actually good for you. In fact, a uh, 250 square foot plot of grass, which is the size of this little area here, is provides enough oxygen for a family of four. And the question is, why has grass been villainized and why has it been picked on? Well, because it's an obvious target for one. You see it in your front yard. But now, I have something here from the Department of Water Resources, and I'd like to just read this to you uh, real briefly. Just, just a sentence, I, and, and you can download this for yourself, Department of Water Resources. Uh, it's called Just the Facts, Water Use in California. It talks about how the... Uh, water usage in California statewide California uses 50% of all the water that's out there for environmental purposes 40% for agriculture about 10% for urban that's landscaping that's the bath and, and shower you take drinking water and so on toilet so the question that comes up to mind then if it's 10% and the number is about roughly half of that number goes out to Southern California goes out outside well, that means then that if, if we follow this logic, if we were to, to concrete in, tear down every tree, take out every lawn, and we would just had blacktop and concrete, imagine the heat effect of that. Well, if we did that, we would only save four to five percent. And grass is such, such a smaller part of that. So the question that needs to come up then is why has grass been villainized? Well, for several reasons. There's vendors out there who want to who want to sell their products. Um, there's people who just don't understand. And and to, granted, it was an easy fix for the water districts to say, "Hey, we'll give you cash for grass." Uh, LA Times ran an article about how El Nino, uh, the, the effects of El Nino, because of the way that people have gotten overzealous about their landscapes, about villainizing grass. And so now there's a whole host of problems. Uh, you don't have grass holding down slopes and hillsides. So what's happening now is there's problems like soil erosion. You have grass that actually acts as a sponge to suck up water. Well, you don't have that now. If you have, if you have gravel or you have DG, that water is going to run either off your property or into your property and could possibly flood your house unless you have sandbags. So it's creating a whole host of problems. Compare gravel or DG to beautiful lawn. And it's the uh, choice is obvious that which one you're going to pick, beautiful lawn. However, why was grass villainized in the first place? It was villainized because, again, it was the obvious target, something you can see. But more importantly, a lot of grass does suck up a lot of water. A, a lot of grass, a lot of types of grass, I should say. Did you know that there's actually grasses out there that were researched by uh, botanists and horticulturists for years, and they actually have identified native grasses and drought tolerant grasses that don't take a lot of water. Now, granted, all plants and all native, uh, native plants inclu included need a lot of water the first year, but once their roots get established and they get si sunk deep into the ground, you can lay off the water and use very, very frequent watering. Everything in life, if, if there's going to be life, water is a prerequisite. And so the grass that we put in today, this is, I'll, I'll give you a little description about this. This is by Southland Sod. The people who make, or, or the people who grow marathon sod, you probably know of them. Well, this is red fescue. Do your research, read about it. It takes very, very little water once it's established. But I'll tell you a big secret how to cut down your water use on any grass, and especially with these drought tolerant grasses, drip irrigation. It is the bomb. In fact, right now, uh, we just installed this uh, Southland sod red fescue grass. 
And guess what? This whole time I've been talking, the water's been on. That's right. And why am I not getting wet? Why do you not see water spilling on the sidewalk or hitting this nice redwood uh, trellis here? Where, where is the water? Well, think about it. The whole goal of irrigation is to water the root zone. So we installed the Rainbird Copper Shield technology drip irrigation underneath. We went every 12 inches. We have pictures on, uh, of it on YouTube or Facebook and YouTube. We've made videos of it going in. And this is the final product right here. Right now, the water's going on and you would never know it because the water is feeding, the, the drip irrigation is feeding exactly where it needs to go right at the root system. It's a beautiful system. Native, drought tolerant, and grass that doesn't need a lot of water. Why would you sacrifice your lifestyle? If you have kids, if you have dogs, you want to know the best part? Not only do you need less water, but you don't need to cut the stuff. This is mow free. You'll, the, the homeowners will never need to cut it. They will have to come out and enjoy it from time to time. And if they have kids, the kids are going to be playing in it. But it's just beautiful. You don't have to sacrifice your lifestyle. Don't buy in to the don't buy into the villainization of something really good. And on top of all that, what does grass do? Well, if you want to get on the technical levels, grass brings the carbon. It brings it back into the into the soil. Carbon is you've heard people how uh, uh, they'll commit suicide by carbon monoxide poisoning. It's it's a, it's it's a poison to us. So grass sucks this poison in, and it gives us oxygen in return. Doesn't get any better than that. So I uh, check this out. Just come, let's go over here, and we're going to show you the how beautiful and gorgeous this is. It just came. We just installed this. It's really wonderful. And I just want to show everybody that you don't have to use a lot of water to have a really great quality of life. And then we did put uh, uh, na native and drought tolerant plants in the back. California friendly plants. Just a wonderful thing. This overall, and to the left, we put, we broke up a, a patio, concrete patio in the back, and then we actually, actually put the pavers, and then there's going to be DG in here, and then we're going to be done. But I just got real excited to tell you that you don't have to sacrifice your lifestyle, your Southern California lifestyle. You don't. This is not Arizona. You don't have to be. You don't. You don't have to have a desert to live here. This is Southern California. We're known for our beauty, we're known for our green. Let's keep it that way. Mike from Enviroscape LA signing off. When you think sustainability, think Enviroscape LA.